All right, guys, so this one's already starting out strange. Another company installed two systems on this house. We've been doing the maintenance on it for 12 years now, 11. Told them it was time to replace both the systems, wanted to give them estimates to replace them, yet they didn't give them any paperwork as far as uh, any kind of problems or substantial problems that would warrant replacing the equipment. some issues and nothing's documented so they wanted us to come out and do a second opinion so I went in the therm house started with the downstairs just got here turned the thermostat down to like 60 degrees went and got my bag out of the truck as I was coming through the bushes the unit was running and then suddenly it just shut off you can see where it was running because the line set is wet still a little cold but just thought it was funny. All I did was sit my bag down over there and as soon as I sat it down, the unit shut off. So, the twilight zone. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with it. I like to take the door off easy in those situations. Of course, they said they've been doing their maintenance. And, uh, Look at that. Huh. Look at all that dirt down there. So they're not not doing a good maintenance. So I'll take a quick picture of that. Just to let them see what's going on. With all the dirt and the cobwebs. First thing I do on a AC maintenance when I get to the outdoor unit is get the brush out like I'm about to do now because pretty much it's a habit on every call I go to. I like to kind of clean up everything I'm working on just a little bit with all that crap in my bag. But uh, I like to kind of get in and dust things up a little bit. It's just a habit for me contactors not pulled in so something opened the contactor so oh, there, there, this is the downstairs unit so I don't know if there's some kind of a safety float device SS2 switch or something under the house and I don't know we will find out uh, but anyway so with that said let's start with voltage meter yeah I thought this was gonna be kind of a quick easy in and out they said they haven't had any problems with the units been working fine um, but this other company told them that they needed to both be replaced they don't look in horrible physical condition other than the dirt and dust that they didn't clean out when they were here doing the maintenance We've got 246 volts right there. Pretty positive I'm not going to have 24 volts to the contactor or it would be closed. Now it is a little cruddy in there. Black. Just the original contactor. It's going to be sooted up in there a little bit. So a contactor is definitely not a reason to replace a system. At least not in my opinion anyway double check so I have no voltage to the contactor so let's go straight to our thermostat wires let's see if we have it coming to the outdoor unit do not so for whatever reason 
24 volts stopped coming to the outdoor unit from inside and it is so while I am here we'll pull the disconnect do a quick capacitor check here check your start capacitor and the run capacitor That's giving me 192. And we'll come up here real quick. This is a 40 by seven and a half. Check that real quick. Thirty nine point eight and seven point four. So that's going to be okay. Uh, hmm. That was weird how it shut off like that, not what, four minutes after I turned it on. Something has dropped our call for wire coming out here. So we're going to head under the house real quick. So we can't check the charge if the unit's not going to run. And we'll go and see what the problem is. But yeah, they didn't clean a, a turd out of this thing. And that's the first thing you do is get all the dirt and the dust out of here. Which, I mean, I'm not here to do maintenance, but... Just a habit for me to clean all that up when I go messing around in a unit. So, anyway, let's head under the house and see what we can find. All right, well, we are under the house. And we haven't lost power. It's got my steady flash in the furnace. I do have a condensate pump over here. There's no water in that pan sitting under the pump. So now I need to find my wires going outside, which are right here. Nice sealed crawl space. Uh, these things are becoming more common, and I gotta tell you, I uh, like them. So here's our thermostat wire going outside. I don't know what they're breaking. This is the one going to the outdoor unit. It's coming back here behind my head. And then going across here. So it's this one the, right here. And then right there. So I need to trace it back to where it connects. This one right here, which is this one. So, so now we've got here thermostat wire is right here. Our blue and our yellow are there, so it appears to me that they're more than likely using all of those devices over there to break R. Now that thermostat may have batteries in it. What do we got here? We got 
got some commons tied in right here, but this is the one coming from my outdoor unit. And then there's my Y. And then they've just got a pigtail in here jumping all the commons together in one place so let's see are we getting a call from the thermostat or not and I'm getting nothing from the thermostat. But I do have 24 volts coming off this board. But, like I said, if they are breaking R through those float switches back there in the condensate pump, this is going to be the one that comes back and ties into my thermostat wires and this thing right here which is a fresh air whole house ventilation control so i should have 24 volts right here if i don't then we got a problem over there with the condensate pump because i know i had it temporarily a while ago the outdoor unit was running so I do have 24 volts coming back here. On R going back to the thermostat and going back to that, but I'm not getting 24 volts coming back from the thermostat. So I'm gonna jump this, see if I hear my contactor close out there real quick. Oh. You hear that out? Hold on. So you can hear the outdoor unit. But here's the problem. That's not the outdoor unit that I was looking at. Because that disconnects out. So that might have been the upstairs unit that just shut off when I got here. And I walked around there maybe, but here's the problem. The downstairs thermostat isn't a call for cooling right now. So, why am I not getting 24 volts back here to that unit? It should be on and running, but I don't have 24 volts. So, but when you hear me jump 24 volts to Y right there, you hear that outdoor unit come on so next step will be the thermostat okay back outside real quick this is the other unit I was at that one first and I think the reason that one shut off when I walked through the bushes was it's probably the upstairs that's the upstairs system thermostat satisfied and I just happened to think that because I had just turned the downstairs thermostat on and set it to 60 degrees that that was the only one running when I got out here and then it shut off when I got through the bushes and I assumed oh what in the world is going on this one is the one for the downstairs same situation they did the maintenance on this last week and they really cleaned this thing up man good job guys good job anyway so this one is not running because when I was under the house, I confirmed I wasn't getting a call from the thermostat on Y. And when I jumped out R to Y under the house, I heard the outdoor unit come on, which was this one because I had the disconnect out on that one. So this is the downstairs system. So this is our problem for the time being. We'll turn that one on in a little bit and check it. But they just wanted a second opinion on why uh, the other company thought both these systems were in just horrible shape and needed to be replaced again. They replaced them two year, or 12 years ago and now they're saying both systems need to be replaced but can't give them a good reason why. Uh, if it turns out they've got a thermostat problem, 
and that's not a good reason to replace two systems so let's get that figured out real quick all right guys got these things running like i said that other company said they came out and did their cleaning they've been doing it for oh, 12 years and you see all the crud down in the bottom of the unit they didn't get anything out down there they didn't they didn't clean anything came out here now they told them both these systems needed to be replaced but yet they still sold them a capacitor they didn't bother recommending that contactor which it's working but uh but yeah they told them these units were in bad condition you saw how clean that furnace was under the house we'll get up in the attic in a minute <coughs> and as far as why the unit wasn't coming on and i wasn't getting voltage out here we'll chalk that up to being rusty after vacation I didn't pay attention to the thermostat. I just went in there and assumed it was already in cooling. Turned the temperature down to 60 degrees. It was actually set to heat, so that's why nothing was running. <laughs> so, chalk that one up to a rusty after vacation mistake. So, I've got the upstairs running right now. I'm not gonna be too invasive on this. And, like I said, they didn't clean anything. They didn't clean jack ass on this unit, but uh, I'm not going to get too invasive on it, but those pressures, this is upstairs, those pressures are fine, I'm not checking the superheat subcooling on it, I'm just going to check those quick pressures and just here to do kind of a second opinion once over and to give them my opinion of why they would have told them they need to replace their systems that have been working perfectly fine and then they come out for the maintenance and say they're in bad shape and need to be replaced and they're not working properly so this is the upstairs i'm not finding any issues other than the fact they didn't clean it uh, we went under the house that furnace is clean, it's spotless. There's no rust in it, it's a 90% furnace. No signs of water leakage inside of it. Uh, I'm not seeing a reason at this point to replace these. So let's get the other unit on and see what that charge looks like. All right, we've got the other unit on now. I'm gonna let it run a couple of minutes. I gotta tell you, they do an outstanding job with their maintenance, is cleaning all this stuff up. I mean, this is the only thing the homeowner is gonna see is your outdoor units. So you come to do a cleaning, what you call a, a preventive maintenance cleaning, and the one piece of the equipment that the homeowner One piece of equipment that the homeowner can actually lay their eyes on looks like doo-doo so what's their opinion going to be if this stuff's dirty as far as they're concerned everything else is dirty so if you're not going to do a proper cleaning don't waste your time don't waste the homeowner's time it's just it's just shoddy shoddy cheap work is what it is so the pressures are fine on the other system <coughs> i'm gonna let this run a little bit i just turned it back on let some of that heat build up in that evaporator coil suction pressure starting to come up We've got warm air coming out of the top of both of these systems but uh yeah guys that's that's <coughs> unfortunately what some people do they just they come out and they don't do what you're already paying them to do and then they want to hit you up for two new air conditioning systems and you didn't even do the job right that you were there to do anyway so <coughs> there's people like that out there guys 
that maybe it's a young guy just getting started. I don't know. But uh, he wasn't trained very well. But yeah, that suction pressure is coming up. And I mean, there's nothing here that justifies me. <coughs> excuse me, telling these people they need new air conditioning systems. I mean, yeah, they're 12 years old. If they have a major repair, which is what I'm going to tell them, you know, if you get to a point where you've got a coil or a compressor that needs to be replaced, um, maybe a TXV motor, no, change the motor. Um, but, yeah, a, a big high dollar repair, yeah, I can see taking that money and investing in a new system but if you're not looking at one of those situations if what you have is working it's working and if it had been cleaned properly when these people were coming out they would have a better chance at that so what's going to happen is i'm going to show them these pictures i'm going to show them both the insides of the outdoor units full of leaves and dirt um, that they didn't clean like they were supposed to clean they didn't do what they were paid to do and what's going to happen is they're going to sign us up. They're going to cancel their agreement with this other company. They're going to come let us service it. And I promise you it won't look like this when we get done. There won't be a leaf in the bottom of the unit. The coil will be cleaned inside and out. Drain lines flushed and cleaned. Cabinets wiped out. Blower, all that stuff. We wipe it. Get it cleaned good the first time. Then each time you come after that, <clears throat> It's easy to just spot check, clean the thing up. It's not as bad. So they're gonna become our maintenance customers. And then when it's time for these two systems to be replaced, we'll be doing the work. That's how it works. You don't do what you're supposed to do. You don't have a leg to stand on. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna pop up in the attic real quick and see what we got up there. See what that condition is. Right, guys now we're up in the attic another train 90% furnace in the attic I don't know why people do that uh, just not fond of a 90% furnace in the attic now look at this here's another example so this company installed this unit 12 years ago they've been cleaning it Cleaning the evaporator coil is kind of part of a the maintenance. These doors, you get the screws out, and that door will slide right out of there. You can get in there and pull the inspection plate out, whatever you need to do, but it's the original mastic. The original mastic from the original install 12 years ago is still there, and it's never been opened, never been unsealed. So in 12 years, that other company has never taken the door off and check that evaporator coil. So anyway, just do a little quick once over up here. Like I said, I'm not going to be too invasive because we're not doing the maintenance on these units at this point. But uh, no rust. No, just not going downstairs in the crawl space. I'm not seeing any rust damage, which indicates that you got a leak in your secondary heat exchanger in these train furnaces. You saw that video I did a couple weeks ago, checking one of these heat exchangers, showing you where it cracks at. I'm not seeing any signs that that's a problem on this one, because you'd have that rust along the bottom wall there. <clears throat> so, the refrigerant charge on both these systems was good check the amp draw real quick on this blower motor did notice the filters inside are dated from back in December so they weren't they haven't been changed in what, four months four and a half months so, mm. is 6.1 so a 
look at that. There's going to be a rhyme to my rhythm here. <clears throat> Just be patient. Look back in there. vibration. We'll reach in there and check the temperature on it in a minute. But where's the sticker at? Oh yeah, that's right. Train. It's upside down. Be patient with me here a minute. I'll turn this off. Temporarily. I want to try to read something if I can read it on the sticker. So the amps on this motor is 5.8 and it's reading 6.1. Now with dirty filters, mind you, they told him he needed to replace both of these units because the amp draw on the blower motor was three tenths higher than it needed to be. So rather than recommending a new motor in a furnace, that as you can see is in perfectly good shape to be 12 years old we are up in an attic so he told him he needed a new furnace so i don't know what they quote unless they're quoting 2500 dollars to put a psc blower motor in <laughs> there's no reason for that so i'm going to check the amp draw on it again with the door off Let's see what happens. <clears throat> real first, real quick. This unit's been running for about 30 minutes now. And that motor. I can hold my hand on it. It's warm. It's not hot. I don't know how much that dirty filter is playing in it pulling 6.1 instead of 5.8 we are running in high speed for cooling so let's reset this thing it's got his own board that could be part of the problem let me go turn on the other thermostat real quick We'll see what it does. I'm just going to jump it out. We've got a damper closed. <clears throat> and this one being zoned, you get a damper shut. It's going to change your static in the system. And I can see that I'm running the amp draw up a little bit. But, uh, let's see what the amp draw is with this door off. I know it's going to be different because the static is really going to be way out of whack at that point. So I'm at... 4.6 I mean I don't see that being a reason to replace a system maybe a motor if it fails it's not running hot it is zoning so there's going to be some static changes on this motor pretty regularly if you got one of your supply dampers shut <coughs> Now that air is backing up, causing this motor to work a little harder. And just checking to see if there's a bypass. Uh, yep, there's a bypass damper over there. So I just I can't justify telling somebody they need to replace a system because a motor is pulling 6.1 amps instead of 5.8 and if the motor quits well just for giggles let's check the capacitor Do -do -do -do. 
I mean, if a motor quits, replace the motor. I'm not replacing a system. Yeah, now if it was 30 years old, 20 years old, and it was just rusted all to pieces and, and all that kind of crap, then yeah, maybe for a blower motor, you consider going ahead and getting a new system. But these units look practically new. They're only 12 years old. I mean, obviously they're not under warranty anymore. But I mean, uh, replacing a system, yeah, 4.9 out of 5, replacing a system over a $700 motor. That makes no sense to me. Now, if the homeowner asks for an estimate, that's one thing. But using that as bait to get a, a salesman in here, that's a whole nother situation. Hello. All right, that was just one of my guys calling. He had a question about something. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wind this up, guys. I'm not pushing this guy for a new system. Yeah, if he wants to have us start doing the maintenance because they're not cleaning anything outside, that's fine. We'll come and do it, but I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to push a new system or over, over a, a motor that's working. I mean, it's warm, it's not hot. I can hold my hand to it. Um it is pulling 61. It's probably got some wear and tear on it. It looks like it's the original motor and it's on a zoning system. So that all starts to add up now. So, uh, run it till it quits. You know, if he wants a new motor, we'll give him a price for one. But, uh, it's not, it's not something I'd replace a system over. So, and I'll let him know we keep motors on the truck. Uh, we can get the LEM motor or he can just let this thing run till it dies and then put a motor in it. Don't replace it because of a motor. At least not this particular unit. It's in good shape. So anyway, guys, that's going to wind it up. Appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time around.